Welcome back, all you fabric and flesh bags, to the super, not funny show, reviews. And today I'm reviewing Interview with the Vampire, episode four. It's entitled, The Ruthless Pursuit of Blood with All a Child's Demanding. Come to you from AMC, streaming on AMC+. Plus. What did I think about it, and should you be watching? In episode four of Interview with the Vampire, we follow up on the previous episode in which... Louis famously saves Claudia, the young uh, woman who was dying in a, you know, burning in a, in a burning building. And in this one, he, I don't want to say he forces, but he really uh, convinces Lestat to save her, to turn her into a vampire uh, because he feels responsible. He wanted to do something, I guess, to make up for the fact that he caused the riots that, you know, got her nearly killed. And from there, uh, you know, the kind of the, the framing for this is that Daniel, who's been, uh, who's been, you know, talking to him directly, is in now instead reading her diaries, where she's kept, you know, many diaries, uh, you know, kind of detailing her early life as, as a vampire, and uh, as in a sense a pseudo daughter to Lestat and to um, you know to Louis, and in what seemed to be happier days. And we find out some interesting stuff that she has a, you know, a, a child's metabolism, so she has to actually drink more, uh, she has to drink more blood than they do. And also that she can't stand animal blood. So she's, you know, as the title implies, she's sort of ins insatiable, super curious, and now she's got all these powers and everything. And, you know, two, I guess to Louis's, you know, dismay, she sort of takes more after Lestat than she does him in some ways. Which is all, you know, it all plays out very well just because Claudia is just such a good character. Uh, she's both, you know, sweet and childlike and, and, and really easy to like, but also she's you know she's just super into being a vampire and, and killing and eating and but also she's she's a bit of a kid and as the years pass on her mind gets you know it becomes more mature but her body stays that of a 14 year old which i would say i was thinking it was more like she was 16 like clearly whoever played this uh young lady uh was <laughs> was in fact probably 20 ish uh, somewhere like that. Her name is Bailey Bass. I'm certain that she is not <laughs> anywhere close to that age. But, we're, you know, we'll go with it. And, and all this time, you sort of see the the trio happy. You know, they're, uh, she's learning. And, you know, again, this is a, a super gay show uh, because they, they just straight out say, you know, Lou, Louis is gay. And so, you know, Lestat is, you know, he's polyamorous or whatever. And they're in a relationship. And she sort of asked straight out, like, how does it work? And, you know, he said the same way it does, you know, with any love works. I really like that. Um, this, and I'll say this episode really got me just because Claudia is such a good character. And to kind of see her, you know, her kind of light up with fascination and discovery and all of that stuff. And to hear in her own words what she was experiencing as opposed to, you know, hearing what, uh, you know, hearing what Louis was saying about what was happening was really interesting. And you could see, and really I liked seeing Daniel experience it was interesting. And also see Daniel, you know, sort of, you know, pressing the manservant of, of Louis about, you know, who he was and why he was doing what he's doing. I, that's all a good, you know, providing some context. And as he said straight up, like, you know, this is the Band-Aid on a failing marriage. That was, you know, you could tell it was it was a bit of a bitter and a, a little hurtful thing, to, uh, you know, for Louis to have to admit that, yeah, that's, you know, what was going on, that, you know, he has a daughter. And it was interesting because there's a funeral bit in there where they, you know, he, he and Lestat and Claudia go to his mother's funeral. And to see the way that he is obviously so far removed like the the connections to his family continue to just you know die and you know that's one of them that died but seeing 
you know, the whole thing about money and everything, that he's a lot more callous and doesn't, you know, he's not more considerate of them, uh, that they're living in the house that he technically owns and that, you know, trying to figure out how he's, you know, he's more like, oh, it's a business transaction. That's my real family. You know, they have, they adopted a daughter. That was uh, interesting to see as he continues to pull away from that part of his life. But also, as he talks to Daniel about how he realized that how he, in every detail he fails her as a as a parent fails to make her uh you know understand what's really going on and how to conduct herself to the point that if eventually she sort of gets her first love and as she wants to have sex you know she wants she, by that time she's like 19 or so she you know she's more grown and as she, instead of doing that she instead drains her first love and sort of seeing how Lestat you know, forces her to, to be hard and it like that, you know, hones more of her as a, as more of the vampire that he thinks she should be and how that's, you know, probably starts to drive a wedge between him and uh, Louis and Lestat. Uh, it's overall, I just, I really like this episode. I, I want to, I, you know, I know where this story is heading and everything. I know, I understand, you know, how, eventually it's going to play out so to just see claudia and sort of the you know fascination of being a vampire and as it's sort you know a realization of how she's stuck as a kid and all of that how that's you know the the beginnings of bitterness about it are are at play and that in a way she is very much like listat that she is she can be cruel about it she can and she has to drink more so she's maybe more of a risk to them and that this is sort of the, you know, the summertime of their lives, but that very soon it's all going to come to a close. Uh, I think that they presented it very well. Uh, I th I really like the, the performances all around. Uh, just Louis being, you know, in, in hindsight, just you can tell he's just really, I guess you could say, I don't want to say cut up, but he's re very much, you know, living in his regret about the things he didn't do correctly, do right by her. Um, and, you know, Daniel as a character, I, I love the fact that he is actually becoming more of a character in the story. He's not just the person, the stenographer. He's actually in it, and he's pressing hard and asking hard questions. And, and I think that I enjoy the back and forth that's going on there. And as always, it, the show looks great. The cinematography is great. The, just all of that stuff. Uh, it just plays out uh, really quite nicely, and I like it a lot. So uh, anyway, great episode, and uh, you know everyone should be watching this show, absolutely. So uh, what did you guys think about this episode? What did you think about what I had to say? Get down to the comments section. Let me know your thoughts. Of course, you can always hit me up, supernotfunnyshow at gmail.com or at supernotfunnyshow on, on Twitter. And do me a favor, get down there, hit that like button. helps with the algorithm and the channel. And... Join the Super Not Funny Show family. Hit that uh, subscribe button and the notification bell. All right, all you Fabric and the Fleshbacks, thanks for joining me. Come back next week. We are going to be talking about uh, episode five of Interview with the Vampire. Until then, I've been Molde Poupe, resident fabricator and comic extraordinaire on all things pop culture. And I'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Mm -hmm.